Hello everyone, welcome to Cloud Patshala's video series on basic Linux commands. This is part 16 of the video series wherein we would be discussing commands like ifconfig, netstat and telnet. Let's jump into the first command ifconfig. The ifconfig command is a Linux command used to configure and display information about the network interfaces. It's a command line tool that can view network interface statuses, configure IP addresses and change the network settings if needed. In order to display the information of the network network interfaces or you could just type in if config to display information about a specific network interface or network interface card you could mention the network interface card ID that is network interface ID if config in this example it is ethernet 0 if you want to bring a network interface card up or down you could use if config ethernet up if config ethernet down the if config command is being phased out in most of the linux distributions as of recording of this video it's been replaced by the ip command which provides more advanced features and it's considered more powerful than the if config command but you would see all legacy system administrators falling back to if config by default for getting the network interface or the IP address details of a particular server. It's important to note that you may need to run these commands with super user permission so you can prefix the command with a sudo or run the commands as the root user itself. Also. The output of the if command may vary depending upon the version of the operating system that you are running. So that is, it is different for operating system flavors like uh, Ubuntu, Red Hat and so on and so forth. Let's look at a practical demo on how this can be played around with. For this, I would be logging into my VirtualBox environment. So this is actually an Ubuntu server which is hosted in my VirtualBox environment. Now that I've logged into the system, what I could say is say if config, and this would give me the details of the network interface card that I have. Now, uh, because this is a VirtualBox VM, I already I only have one ethernet adapter or the network adapter attached to this uh, system or this server. I could go to the settings of this and you would see that in the networks, I only have one adapter assigned at the moment. Now, if you want to assign a different adapter, you could definitely do it. Uh, but for that, we would have to power on the VM and then play around with the adapter. So let me quickly shut down the VM. I'll just power off the VM. There's nothing much to be saved on the VM. So I'll just do that. I'll go into network and adapter 2 is now enable so I would do it as adapter 2 and this adapter I would keep it as a bridge adapter uh, no harm there and then again power on the virtual machine so you would now see that uh, this is the console that is coming up I would still be able to log in with my virtual box environment going forward so I could just double click on this shortcut that I've created and this would take me to a login prompt where it would ask me for my password for the Ubuntu user on that particular server. Provided the password, I've logged into the system, I'll clear the screen and I'll say if config and you would see that I only am seeing the default network adapter that we earlier had. But if I do an if config A, it will then show me the new network adapter that has been added that is uh, ENP that is 0S3. So this is the new network adapter that has been added. Now what I could do is I could say if config the adapter and then say up. As I'm not the super user, I would not be able to do that. So I would do with this super user, and you would now see that if I do an if config on this, the second network adapter is also enabled as we see 
Now, if I have to disable the second network second uh, or the newer one, or uh, what I could just say is if con config the Ethernet card, and I'll say down and and this would disable the network adapter like we already had. So this is how you could play around with the network adapters or the if config command to configure enable disable your network adapters as you wish. Now there is a lot of information that comes along with the if config command so let's try to understand what they are. You would find that uh, the network adapter or the NIC card would be allocated an IP address. So if config is generally and ideally used for getting the IP information of the server to know what the IP address for that particular network adapter is. So for this instance, we get a network IP of 10.0.2.15. The separate mask on the broadcast IP is also allocated. If you are using IPv6, you would also be getting an IPv6, uh, the IP address allocated to you. There is a lot more other information related to uh, the packet sizes and all other information that is there. In an if config command, we primarily would be looking at what the IP address that network interface card. Like we saw, I, if config is being disabled or deprecated very soon and this would be replaced with IP. Now, if you type IP, it would not be giving you the basic objects, but what we can do is use the flags that are available on our screen to see what we can gather from it. If I say IP and then say address, so you would see that I am getting the same IP at the same list, but this time I'm also getting the third network interface card that is attached to this server, but not enabled at the moment. And you would clearly see that the FQ code L state is down at the moment. If I bring it up, this would then be giving us an IP address and all other things as usual. This is how network administrators and Linux admins identify the IP address of a particular server if they are logging in through a console. This is very, very important wherein you would be able to bring the server up or bring the server down in a network. The next command that we would be looking into is netstat. The netstat command in Linux is used to display network connections, routing tables and variety of network interface and network protocol statistics for us. It is useful command for troubleshooting network related issues and monitoring network activities. Some example of the netstat command are netstat you could say a hyphen t-u-l-n which would display all the activity active connections that are there in the system. If you want to display all, all the listening ports that are there on the server, you could say netstat hyphen L T N N and you would get the list of all the listening ports that are there. To display all the open connections to a specific port, uh, what you could say is netstat hyphen A T N, then you could do a grep on that particular port number which would give you the details of all the connections that are open on that particular port. To display all the established connections, uh, you could utilize the grep command to search for established and that would give you a very quick overview. If you want to see all the statistics of all the protocols, uh, all you have to say is netstat-s and this would give you a detailed statistical report of all the things that are there. To display the routing tables on the operating system itself, uh, you could say netstat-r. If you want to check the network interfaces and their statistics, uh, you could say netstat-i. If you want to display all the multicast group memberships, you could say netstat-g. The netstat command, as you see in the previous slides, have many options and you can use them to display different type of information and statistics. For example, hyphen t to display the TCP connections, hyphen U to display the UDP connections, hyphen L to display the listening ports and hyphen N to display the numerical addresses instead of host names. Let's look at a very quick demo on how network administrators use netstat command on a daily basis.
cases. For this, I would be going back to my Linux prompt. I would be clearing the screen and I would just say net stat and this would give me a very holistic view of what is happening on the server at the moment. But if I want to see, but if I want to see all active connections that are there on the server, I could use netstat -t -u -l -n, and that would give me the detailed output. We also use plunt which is a simplified version of knowing the thing. We just add hype, uh, the character P over there and we'll get a similar output. And plant is something which uh, network administrators uh, find it easy to remember what the netstat options should be used for. Here, if you see, we are able to get both TCP as well as UDP connections. Now, if you don't want TCP, and you only want UDP, you could just remove the T over there and this would give you all the UDP connections. If you don't want the UDP connections and you only want the TCP connections, you could replace or remove the U and add T and this would give you a detailed list of all connections. Now if you want to see the statistics of all the connections, you could do a hyphen S and this would give you the basic statistics that are available on your network interface card. So you see that forwarding uh, for IP there are two forwardings. Uh, a lot of things are happening. We are act we have five active TCP connections as of now. We have 311 UDP connections or UDP packets that are received now because UDP is not a two-way acknowledgement uh, kind of a network we only have what we have received so far on the UDP network. Now, if you want to see the routing tables that are available on the operating system itself, you could use hyphen R. So, this is the default route table that we already have on the operating system. So, this is how uh, netstat command is used on a day-to-day -day basis. Of all of these uh, options that we have seen, the personal favorite that I use is PLUNT, which would give me a list of all active UDP and TCP connections along with the local address that is the port number which they are using. And if there are any connections which have been initiated, we would also be getting the ephemeral port numbers that we have. Let me run the same netstat command on my local Windows server. And you would see that if I just run netstat, it would give me a detailed list of all of all the things that are happening on my network interface card of my Windows server. So all the addresses that you see here in the local address is the addresses which are being used to establish the connection. The foreign address is the address where the connection is being established to. If you, if you see, uh, for example, in this, we are connected to 20.198.118.190 on 443, that is HTTPS. And the local, uh, the, the local IP or the local port uh, from which we are connecting is 49878. The next command uh, that we would be using today is telnet. Telnet command is a command line tool used to connect to remote system using the Telnet protocol. Telnet is a network protocol that allows you to connect to remote system over the internet and perform various tasks such as sending emails, transferring files and running remote commands. Here is a few examples of how you could use Telnet command. Uh, you just have to say Telnet space the server details. If you want to try telnet on a specific port number, you could say telnet, the server details, it could either be the host name or the IP address and the port number. Let's look at a very quick example of how we could look at the telnet command as well. So uh, I'm currently on this uh, VM of mine, I'll clear the screen. I could say telnet, I could say google.com and I could use the port number as 443. Now if you see, now as soon as I type telnet google.com443, 
uh, the prompt that I get is trying to connect to this IP address. Now this IP address is what is uh, provided by the DNS. So this is the Google's uh, IP address that we are getting and you get a prompt saying that connected to google.com. That means that there is no firewall issue happening at our end which allows us to connect to google.com. But if I do the same thing on 1433, you would see that here it is trying to connect to this particular IP address but I have not got a confirmation that it was able to connect to google.com. In this scenario, if you only see trying in the prompt, that means that the connection was not able to establish. Now in this reason, it is because 1443 is the port number for Microsoft SQL Server and Google is no SQL Server, so we would not be able to connect to the google.com website on 1433. But I could definitely connect to the Google website on port number 80. So as you see, we already have got a confirmation that it was able to connect to google.com. The same thing is applicable for all troubleshooting steps. This kind of a troubleshooting is very beneficial if you are working on a client which is trying to connect to a server. The server could be a Windows machine, a Linux server, any other server which is actively listening on a particular port. For example, if you are trying to log into a PostgreSQL server and you are not able to get to the login prompt, you could definitely try a telnet, the host name and the port number 5432 and see if you are able to connect to the PostgreSQL server using the telnet command. If you are able to connect to the server with that command, that means that there is no network related issue at your end and maybe you could focus your troubleshooting on the user account that you are using to log into the PostgreSQL server. So this is how you could use the trilogy of if config or IP to get the details of the server to which you want to connect. You could then use netstat to see if you have already established a connection from your local machine to that particular server and use telnet at the end to see if you are able to connect to the server on that particular port number. So these three commands uh, would be a very very helpful for you. That's it for this video. We would also like to inform you that we do undertake online courses on leading cloud technologies and DevOps where you would be learning major technologies like AWS, Terraform, Ansible, Docker, Jenkins, Kubernetes so that you could kickstart your career in DevOps. We hope you like this video. Please like and share the video with as many people as possible. If you are not subscribed to the channel, we strongly recommend you to subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. Keep having a great day.